Ramble. Thank you to Green Chef, BetterHelp, and Thrive for sponsoring. I don't fuck my pig. Welcome to Guilty Pleasure. <laughs> Does he say that? Yeah, yes. that's my favorite quote movie. Welcome to oh. Guilty Pleasure, the show that loves what it loves. Today, we are talking about the one, the only, Nicholas motherfucking Cage oh and his God. new movie, Pig. Guys, what a day. I can't believe, first of all, Ugh. shame on us, shame on me mm. for not having Nick Cage, the king, may, one of the preeminent stars of the Guilty Pleasure extended yeah. universe. Oh. Yeah. We haven't done a single movie of his it's yet. It's so weird. Yeah. He, we could literally have an entire season, season of Nick Cage. on Nick Cage. Yeah. Nick Cage as an artist, oh. as, uh, <laughs> as a... As a a decision maker. <laughs> I don't know what to, to say. Fashion icon. A fashion yeah. icon. Um, as a as a national just, treasure. Just a literally, true, literally, and movically. Wow. You know, canonly. Canon- canonically. 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 I learned that word today. It's a beautiful word. I, I never that. heard of it in my life. Uh, we're talking about pig, which guys. I okay. <laughs> I guys. didn't really tell Kelsey and Garrick that oh this God. was like. A great movie. Fantastic. And they were watching it like, when's it going to get? No, this movie yeah. fucking rules. I, yeah. I, I remember I was watching and I was like kind of on my phone. How dare and then a couple things happened. And I was like, oh, let me, let me put this bitch down. Because this is fucking compelling. This, this is made great. You put your phone down. It made me put my phone down. Wow. Like I want to say like five minutes in. Yeah. Um, Because it, I... Again, I keep on talking about scores and all of that shit, but like how quiet and quaint it was. It reminds me weirdly of The Last of Us, if anybody's ever, I'm the video sure. Game. Our, yeah. Uh-huh. Our soon to be an HBO have, show. Soon to oh. be an HBO show. Um, and th- there's a still of it. And I was like, oh yeah, this shit is going to make us all cry. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, it reminds me of that, like ser- those serene moments where mm-hmm. you're just like kind of walking around in the game, and as you're hearing like birds chirping and crickets and all of this stuff constantly, and it just lives in that, and I fucking love it. Mm. It's such a good movie. It's it, yeah, it it was something that I remember when the trailer came out. People were losing their shit because they were like, what the fuck is this movie? It's called Pig. It's called Pig. <laughs> and it's, it's Nicholas Cage, who's an insane. A person, yeah. at slash actor, slash genius. Uh-huh. And so I remember the buzz on Twitter, and I remember being like, "Oh, like there's, n- why would I go see this yeah. unless I'm watching it like as an awards thing or right. friends or whatever?" Yeah, I could not believe that this has not gotten more more buzz. But more this buzz. is this is about where those types of movies land mm. you yeah. know where it's just we like we feel cool right yeah 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 but it's just we like saw we it. saw it and it's we also like this is the Oscars. year where no one saw anything right, right? True. so true, true, true. we're here to but fix everyone that everyone saw spider-man so but, everyone <laughs> saw Spider-Man. Yeah. but we're here to fix that we're here to say yes. hey people yeah get on that You're fucking welcome. pig train get on the pig you train. will not regret it oink oink motherfucker <laughs> no <laughs> it's from solar opposites please anyway. make that a clip just oink oink motherfucker it's so uh, funny because the the, the the one line pitch of pig is it's john wick but about a pig but it's sad yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or for anyone who it's, hasn't seen john wick it's nick cage is looking for his pig yeah that's yeah. it that's the entire truly, fucking movie. Truly, if you were to pitch this to me, I'd be like, go fuck yourself. I'd be I'm like, not, you're high I on drugs. You're high on drugs. I don't want to. And then you're like, okay, but I have Nick Cage. And you're like, I, uh, dude, I mean, uh, that's making it, it worse yeah. because he's, he's, you know, he could go either which way. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, they, you, hearing about it and hearing what the premise is. And like, as I, th- I, I remember driving over here and like thinking about the movie and wh- where it went. Literally, I'm going to do your synopsis. Oh, here we go. This is about a man who is a truffle pig farmer. A recluse. A recluse. He's in the woods. He's just chilling. He's got his pig, his trusty pig. Her name is Pig, Pig, I guess. Um, The title of the movie, I pointed. Anyway, uh, (laughs) his pig gets taken from him in the middle of the night. He gets beat up. Gets beat up. And then he goes on this long journey. And if you were to tell me that, I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) This This is is terrible. But it's so good. This is is what I wrote trying to explain. I was like, how would I explain this on the podcast? Like to people who don't believe us. 
that this is so insane. Like it, you think, okay, it's about a man looking for his lost pig. He starts in the woods. Mm-hmm. Then we end up in Portland. In Portland. Yeah. Then we go to yeah. an underground fight club. Yeah. Uh-huh. Then a childhood home. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then With a the Michelin, cutest child I've ever seen in my life. And then a Michelin star restaurant. Yep. And that is the first act. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, how can you reveal yeah. enough about this film to say like people, you need to just go fucking watch it. Cause it's hard to explain yeah. without I, giving away. I know the mystery. And right. I want to, this is a rare, this does not happen often on this show. No. I may bleep a word that you said there. Yes. Oh, okay. Because this is a one time. Normally I'm like, guys, you can just listen to the show. You don't need to watch the movies. Yeah. It's going to be a great episode no matter what. Yeah. If you're interested, so far from what we were saying, yeah, you have. No I think idea you should just happening. go watch it. You should just go yeah. watch it. I think like, you should pause watch it. This. Pause this fucking thing. Pause it right go now. Watch, right now. Yeah. And go watch it. And then come back so we and can then talk come, about yeah, all and then we'll talk about it. And if you're not sold yet, I will tell you why I want to without revealing anything. And it's my first pleasure, mm. which is the mystery, the subtle mm. mystery yeah. that this movie ekes out slowly. Mm. Yeah. Because you're like, okay, it's just a guy. He's a recluse. He's a pig. That's He's fine. He's kind of a nut job. He's weird in the woods. Also, then you go, yeah. The context of where we are with this style of movie, with the John Wicks and with Nobody as well, kind of lends to the misdirect of the movie as a whole because 100%. you're expecting for him to be some kind of action hero. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Or like Guy Gone Crazy. You're guy Gone figure Crazy. Figure out why yeah. he's this fucking weirdo in or the he's, woods. He's like a murderer yeah. or something, some kind of deep dark past yeah. that he doesn't that he's like running away from the law or some shit like yeah. that and, and so it's yeah. just not and so you yeah. get you get like the first mystery is people start to make allusions to who this mm. guy is and who he was mm-hmm. yeah much like john wick so you're like who is this guy I've yeah. then he meets john this wick. guy Can named oh, you, you, you got you got to see john wick i have to watch a lot I, of things to be on this podcast okay give me some room that's fair but i think that this that john wick stemmed okay. or in birthed a lot of this style okay. of movie but literally the whole first act is just the slow reveal of questions it's yeah. who is this guy yeah then he goes to see some guy and they go do you know who that guy is? They ask him. Then there's this guy, Edgar. Who's Edgar? Then he goes to a house. Did he used to live here? Oh, no. Then he's outside of a of a, a, a building in Portland. They're like, wait, he used to live here? He used to have another life. Then there's an underground city. And you're like, how does he know yeah. about that? Yeah. And then literally their questions are asked, how do you know that? Who are you? Mm-hmm. And so that is the moment where in the first act you're like, oh, I thought this was a quaint movie about the pig. No, no. Yeah. it's about this the is, man. We are slowly uncovering the mystery of this man's life. Yeah. Yeah. And I am on fucking board. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. It's You bring up such a good point about and like And welcome Nick to the Cage. spoiler territory. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're out, spoiling fuck y'all. Yeah, We're yeah, going yeah. for it. So, well, I, I'll is closing try to, his ears. Yeah, He's I'll very to, sad about everything. The, you, you give off such a good point about like Nick Cage being able to go either way with this because this man does not in shower movie. in the movie. He <laughs> does not shower. Rob. The entire movie. Yeah. It well, takes place over about five days ish or four days. When he first we first meet him, the his handler offers to buy him a shower. Yes, but he <laughs> yeah. stinks and then he goes the rest of the movie, I'm talking about to Michelin starred restaurants, to fight scenes, to houses, to talk to people, to restaurants, to bakeries without having showered i i wrote this in my notes it's how does one describe what nick cage looks like in this movie in the year 2022 without, without being, being offensive, offensive without because being politically incorrect I, there's really no night there's no polite words no. no to describe his look no. he looks like someone who sleeps in his own urine yeah he looks like someone who was a beaten bum. he looks like he was hit a lot yeah and that's just what it is like, he looks he like someone who's shower. on every Somebody drug a tough yeah. he lives under the bridge yeah. he got the shit kicked out of yeah. him he has every mental disorder under yeah. the book and you are expecting i think because of what we we know about nick cage yeah which makes this casting choice brilliant yes mm-hmm. you are expecting violence yes. to erupt yeah and you are watching him and you're waiting to watch him exact his revenge yeah and it creates this tension over the movie that ultimately is not what the movie's about. Yeah. Right. And it uses that against you. And yeah. you're just, you're, you're waiting. Yeah. Totally. And you're waiting. The whole time. You're waiting even when the he, he gets pass. into the, the fucking fight club, I'm like, oh, he's about to beat oh, somebody's ass. ass. 
And then he just gets beat the fuck up. For money. He for stands money. there and lets a little guy with... Um, so paint this for us. With, Where are we? Okay, so we go to an underground bar. Do you know like, Portland has that, by the way? There's a whole underground city under yeah, Portland. No, there I had no fucking yeah. yeah. They built a city on top of a city. Oh, shit. Yeah. So he goes through like, really uh, cool. uh, like a custodian creepy. door to these underground tunnels and arrives in this giant underground warehouse where people are hustling and tussling and there's a guy who's i guess like, hotel portland yeah the, there is no the hotel referee. portland it used to be here and, <laughs> yeah and then he he goes <laughs> is that good Nick Great, by the way i'm trying so then he walks up to the board like everyone stops and you hear a fucking pin drop and he walks up to the board and writes his name across in like black charcoal and then all of a sudden people just start putting money down and you're like oh shit he's about to fucking rock so he's think about to it's, fight and so it, to pause yeah. there at this moment he writes robin Felled in big letters, and I go, <gasps> Who's that? Me yeah, too. Yeah. That's the first yeah. time you hear who his is, name. Who is Robin Feld? Because I've never yeah. heard it. It felt like such an incredible reveal, and yeah. I don't know his who name this is fucking so guy is. so lame, yeah. too, compared to who he is. But everyone drops money, money. down, and I'm expecting, Oh, fuck. We're 30 minutes fight. in this movie. Nick Cage is going to single handedly mm -hmm. beat seven dudes' asses at once. And then it turns out the guy who put down the biggest wad is one of the shortest guys in the room. And he walks up to Nick Cage and they're big foot and a half difference. And you're like, oh, shit, Nick Cage is about to rock his world. And then the guy just starts to beat the living shit out of Nick Cage. And it's revealed that this is some sort of underground fight club for people that need to beat the shit out of someone. And they pay to beat the shit out of someone for a minute straight. It is wild. And yeah. also like... The physicality of Nick Cage, I did not realize. He big that boy. man is huge. He's a big boy. <laughs> he a big is. boy. And you know what's so smart, too? Okay, when he gets uh, mugged, when his pig gets stolen in the beginning, yeah. there's this shot of him putting a knife into a into a wood block. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, oh, He's that knife is coming back. Blood. And then when he goes to get kidnapped, he reaches for the knife but can't. So like, there is this, in a very subtle way, the movie it introduces the possibility of, of violence. violence. Yeah. So you're expecting it, but yeah, it never, never and comes. Here's the and thing throughout that, the whole movie, the yeah. cage does not ever fight. Yeah. yeah. Not once. Yeah. So the other thing to note is he has a pig that is hunting truffles. Yes. And yeah. truffles are very, very, they're they're like worth more than gold, I think, in the restaurant world. They're, I think like a fist is like 800 bucks. No, way more than that. Is it that. more? Oh my God, way more than that. Really? Like thousands. And depending on the truffle, you can go up, up even higher. One time Jared and I were eating at a really fancy Italian restaurant that, that only has like eight seats at the bar. And this guy comes in literally with a security guard. And we're like, oh, that must be an important person coming to eat here or something. And he walks right behind the bar and the chef meets him out there. And he starts opening these like briefcase coolers. Oh my God. And we're oh. like, what? And it's like 11 in the morning. We were at a possible place at 11 in the morning. Yeah. Don't ask. And he starts busting out truffles. That's fucking sick. Like a Whoa. fucking drug dealer. Wow. And the chef he like sees us and he's like, yeah, you, you want to see like what this is and how much these Whoa. are worth? And the guy looks like a mob king. Yeah. And I was like, I did not know that the truffle business is a lot of money. So That's they set cool. that up too, that Nick Cage is in this business that is very high money, rare piece of earth that he is living in a fucking shack in the woods. And so it becomes almost like a mobster-esque drug deal movie yeah. when they've taken his pig, which is like the million dollar instrument used to find these million dollar bulbs such a good moment they go to like this farmer's market or something and there's this old woman <laughs> yeah. Yeah. where they're like someone took his pig and she goes that motherfucker yeah, like shit yeah. i'm a fucking taking my shit look yeah. right, whatever like she was she was really pissed about yeah it. you don't I love it fuck with someone's trouble yeah. pig, apparently uh we're, we're gonna talk so much more about nick cage yeah but this movie is actually a two-hander yes it's nick cage and alex wolf who is that kid naked brothers band fame and what else is he in? Jumanji. And what else? Old. No. Keep going. And that's all I got. But he was a child was he star. Was Perks of Being a Wallflower? Mm, no. No. Oh. That is um, another kid. Okay, carry but on. But he's sorry. great. And he is so good in this movie. Yeah. He drives up in, in his hot sports car, which yeah. Karen texted us and goes... 
it is that is not a good enough Camaro to to <laughs> represent a rich guy's car. Okay, so it was a trash all. Camaro. It was just like a regular Camaro with a body, okay. but a yellow Camaro. Yeah, and they do such a good job of immediately showing who this guy is. I mean. The director fucking knocked it out of the park. Oh I, my God. I, I need to pull up his name later. But it's this shot of through Nick's cabin. So you see like they're framed in this like dingy but practical grounded forest world. And yeah. you see him in his like nice press shirt with his sunglasses. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, this guy only cares about status. Yeah. yeah. That's all he cares about. Yeah. And through the movie, you but learn it, why he is the way he is. Yes. And just like yeah. just visual details. I know who you are. I cannot wait to tell all my guilty bees all about Thrive Cosmetics. It is a high performance beauty and skin care product made with clean skin loving ingredients. No parabens, sulfates, or phthalates, certified 100% vegan and cruelty free. I love Thrive Cosmetics because my favorite, favoritist product, which is the Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara, which is ultra lengthening, eye-opening mascara that lasts all day without clumping, smudging, or flaking. And the cause is bigger than beauty. For every product purchase, Thrive Cosmetics donates to help women thrive, women emerging from homelessness, surviving domestic abuse, fighting cancer, and more. Now is a great time to try Thrive Cosmetics for yourself. Right now you can get 15% off your first order when you visit thrivecosmetics.com slash guilty. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash guilty for 15% off your first order. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Relationships take work. I mean, I got to sit with these two guys every week. Oh, Lord. You know, a lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about, like I do for these boys every week. How often do we give ourselves the same treatment? This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, baby. That is the one you have with yourself. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Like, I shouldn't even be on camera right now. I look a hot mess. I love BetterHelp. I do it from the comfort of my own home. I don't think I'll ever go back to in-person therapy. I don't have to worry about parking. I can do it from my couch with my cats. Mm, I just love it. So give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Guilty Pleasures is sponsored by BetterHelp and you can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash guilty pleasures. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash guilty pleasures. But yeah. even like the way he was dressed, as soon as he got out the car, I was like, we're in Portland because, ah! or we're in the um, the Pacific Northwest or somewhere over there because that's just what they are. They're skinny Amazing. people in like a ca- Canadian tuxedo and like the buttons all the way up to the top. That's just their whole chic. They got a little mustache where the hipsters <laughs> pretty much came from. And you're looking around and you're like, OK, there's enough woods around here mm-hmm. to be like, oh, this is either... Pacific Northwest or maybe upstate New York. Mm. And I don't think I thought that it was upstate New York. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. I don't like, think they have enough truffle. And that, I only thought that they don't have truffle. Yeah. They probably don't. The only reason why I thought upstate New York is because of uh, Get Out. And I was like, ah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, the pig, who unfortunately so only cute. has a couple minutes of screen was time. adorable. He is so cute. He so looked cute. like a dog. He yeah. had he like looked, hair. He looked, yeah, he looked like he had a little mullet. He's he was crazy like, looking. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was a girl. Oh, it, it was, a, it was girl. a girl. She looked like she had a little mullet. Yeah. And, and Nick is like whistling like here, girl. And like they're, they're besties. Just, it's yeah. just like, you know, if you're going to make an entire movie mm-hmm. about a guy trying to get his pig mm-hmm. back, you got to nail it in the first couple and minutes. Yeah, they do. They, yeah. It's revealed that they've been together 15 years, mm. him and this pig. So it's like that's him alone in the woods with this pig is the only fucking thing he has. Yeah. And, Wick, and when it gets taken from him, when I tell you guys, I counted the first 20 something minutes. Nick Cage says 25 words. He says nothing. And all he repeats is, I want my pig back. I want my pig. I want (laughs) to find my pig. Who has my pig? That is the only thing this man says majority of the movie. And what is so, fuck, I love this movie. But this is- What's incredible is how much is said with nothing. With absolutely nothing. Because- at the end of the day, 
less is way more. Mm. Like truly, and this is a, a testament to directors and writers that trust an audience fully yes. in the mm-hmm. same way that they do with Dune, where it's just like, I'm not going to explain shit. Mm-hmm. Just pay attention. Just be and here. And you'll literally, I'm literally inching you along mm-hmm. a, a path and you'll figure it out as we go along. Like mm-hmm. I, there's no real need to spell everything out for you mm-hmm. because you're an adult. This is a PG-13 movie, I'm guessing. Wow, like, I thought it would be R. Yeah, or maybe R. Did we mention that the guy he's with is his truffle de- like buyer yeah, I, dealer, I mean, yeah, Amir? And again, that's never really said, but you but figure you get it, it out. Because immediately, you know, Nick Cage goes into disarray without right. his pig. And the only person he knows in his yeah. life that he can call on to for help who he doesn't even fucking know or really care about is this kid right. who's probably what like in his 20s who mm-hmm. is his truffle buyer dealer right. so then he becomes enroped in this crazy next 48 72 hours of helping Nick <laughs> Cage and but he that's... becomes like a, a a a version of the audience right like I had no idea who the right. fuck this guy was and now I'm figuring out everything about his life and yeah vice versa i feel like that's that's the other thing is that it's not even that crazy of a of a ride no it's just so many different it's a lot of different places i would say like a lot of different locations but it just kind of eases you along to where it even though it is like extravagant Mm -hmm. i guess right like you're you're going to you know underground fight clubs and 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 etc it never feels like this is something that nobody could do right right like it just feels like oh this is someone going about Mm. a day but it is still their day you know know, and it it never leaves the realm of reality Uh, right exactly although it sounds like an unbelievable premise it does like trying to explain this movie but it's so simple and i i feel like that is a is is what movies are supposed to do where if I am, if somebody is telling me a story mm-hmm. and if a movie is just trying to emulate someone telling you a story, mm-hmm. certain details are going to be left out. Certain things are yeah. going to be forgotten or, or what have you. You don't have to tell me everything, but I, enough for me to follow along. Yeah. And get a vibe. And get a vibe. Yeah. And if Got you put that, yeah, <laughs> if you put that in the script and then you... The, the visual aspect of it, like the direction and all of that stuff, yeah. just like it's truly like yeah your imagination of this story mm-hmm. not exaggerated just told and shown like this is what that is yeah. and it's such a beautiful way such little dialogue it's too. a fucking master class of subtlety and of of nuance and of of a scene having subtext yeah and mm-hmm. okay to talk about I, there's there's a scene i want to talk about but we have to talk about Nick Cage the man mm-hmm. and why he is perfect for this movie oh, so I we're gonna pause why. this movie because Nick Cage is fucking nuts, you guys. Yeah. The 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 breadth of his work. He like you. We forget that he is an Oscar winning actor, and you watch like him in adaptation, and you're like, this is one of the greatest living actors that we have. Yeah. He is phenomenal. But then the dude just loves acting. Yes, so he he's in everything. Everything and is not discerning and he will yeah. go from adaptation to knowing yeah. to like he will go to ghost writer. Full bonkers Man. and An just insane person. And it's so fun that it's kind of now coming back and people are like, oh right, Nick no, is a good He's always been great. And you know yeah. what he's gonna do with this goodwill? Immediately uh, throw gonna, it away yeah. and just go back to making whatever the yeah. fuck he yeah. wants. Yeah. yeah. You know, do you guys know I had a Nick Cage poster in my house? Mm. <laughs> like a full, like movie poster size photo of just his face smiling. Why? Because I'm an idiot. Okay. <laughs> I think you're in love with Nick Cage. I, I think for rightful reasons, though, like you're just weird enough to have that like quirk about you that yeah. you like Nick Cage. Do you guys know that if you scroll far enough back on my Instagram, I had a, a phase called Cage a Day oh, where boy. I posted a photoshopped photo of Nick Cage not ones that I made. Some of them I did. Uh, and I posted one, and my friends really hated it. So I'm like, that's funny. So I posted another one, and they really hated it. So I did it for 30 days straight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, someone's going to need to go find that now. And yeah. I posted different Photoshopped photos of Nick Cage for 30 oh, straight wow. days. Amazing. So you were Fuck like jerking off to friends. this movie. You loved I it. I love this man. Okay. And now... 
let's get back to the power yes. of his fucking acting. Because yeah. there is, as you said, he says so much with nothing. Yeah. yeah. And there's this one scene. There's two scenes that are incredible. And I'm thinking of the one that you texted about, Garrick, where he is at this restaurant. Yeah. Oof. And he, he wants to speak to the manager. And his face. The chef. The chef. The the chef. I'm chef. sorry. I'm sorry. The head chef. And his face is just vibrating yeah. with anger. And you're, yeah. you're he hasn't showered either. You're staying on his face. And he says a million things with no words yeah. at all. Yeah. And just for people that, following the story at this point is what we missed is that in the first act, you get a villain without knowing who or what the villain is about. And it's part yeah. of the mystery, right? Is that when we go to this farmer's market, we meet this old woman who's like, who the fuck would steal a pig? She goes to these sort of like meth head, like um, free, uh, what are they called? Like Drekkies, junkies. Tweakers, tweakers. Tweakers, yeah. And she knows that they had something to do with it because of the car that was seen there. And these tweakers are terrified of the person who is never named. There's no details. All you get to hear is about how this guy you don't want to make angry. And yeah. he says that as if not Nick Cage is not the absolute scariest yeah. fucking man in this movie. Yeah. So you're going, wait. He literally looks like a walking pine tree. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, there's a Just villain? Very upsetting. Th worse than whatever Nick Cage yeah. is fucked yeah. up about. And as you keep going, he's trying to now find this villain by connecting the pieces and going backwards with truffles. So he goes to the restaurant that is now serving the winter dishes with the truffles. And he now that's what I wanted to set up when you were talking about that scene at the restaurant. Guys, I am such a sucker for a movie and it's really like the John Wick type movie when a character who were like, who's this guy? And he goes into a scene and everyone goes, oh, Robin, it's yeah. you. And you just like each scene, we're just meeting people from his past life and they're revealing a little yes. bit more, a little bit more. And really what it is, it's just a character portrait. Yeah. Mm. Like we are going on this journey and through this journey, we're just going to reveal a little bit more and a little bit more, but we're never going to say it. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. just gonna pick it up through the little pieces. What a around great it. way to 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 develop a character. Yeah, because you've already given us what we think we should know in the fucking first ten minutes, right? Right. right. And then to to have your your opinion of him completely get pulled away like like a sheet. Yeah, you think off. we think he's a bum, yeah. or we he's crazy, he's or he's gonna he's job, violent, whatever. Right. Crazy past. But that, no, there's a pain that we need to yeah. uncover. Yeah. In that scene, that's when I figured out that he was a chef. Yes. When he puts his thumb in the food. Uh, yes. It's okay. So yeah. he the waitress comes up and gives this incredible long yes. speech about like Yes, gastronomy. They have like a the she, smoke yeah, glass. She, a, she lifts a glass and there's like smoke over scallops and there's a little quail egg and he just slowly takes his thumb <laughs> and smushes it, smears it and goes, I'd like to speak to the chef. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and she cannot, fu that has never happened in this restaurant. Not. It is a three star Michelin experience. And this guy, by the way, Still blood all over his fucking face. <laughs> I can't get over face. the fact that so much he blood. never showered or cleans his wound or cleans, or his, cleans his cleans fucking his wound in this three star Michelin chef. But this is where we really get to hear the weight of who this guy is. It's revealed, yes, that he's a chef. And then we sit down at this Michelin star restaurant. But they never say he's a chef. Yeah. What they say, what happens right. is the, the Michelin chef mm -hmm. looks at him and goes, is everything okay? And then he just stares at him and he, and you see the him chef's face change. Yeah. And he goes, oh my God. And he pulls up a chair. Yes. Yeah. And there, that's it. That that's was the biggest power yeah. shift of all that's time. That's all you need. Just him pulling up a chair and I've being learned like, so much. I've, the yeah. most revered position in all of food, which is the Michelin chef, becomes a little boy in front of this guy and just yeah. wants, oh my God, chef. Doesn't he call him chef? He does later in the scene. Right. Yeah. It's like Chef Feld, I think. Yeah. Chef Feld, like, oh my God, I, oh my God, how are you? Right. But I haven't seen you in what, 15 years? And then he starts going, going, going. Like, anybody that's ever watched Gordon Ramsay do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you immediately know why he's terrified of yeah. this person. Yeah. And this scene, you get to watch Nick Cage oh. 
absolutely eviscerate this man. Yeah. He acts. Yeah. I, I, no words can fully express how powerful yeah. he is. And I like, I, I know someone who didn't love this movie. Who? Watched it on an airplane. You uh, can't do that. No. You need to look at a big ass screen mm-hmm. so you can stare at this beautiful man's Blue. fucked up yeah. face. Also, I mean, on the other end, the chef was acting his ass off. He was so he, good. He, he was so, so good. His I teeth was like, deserve an Oscar. <laughs> yeah, because like the way he was like kind of shifting his mouth. He's like, <laughs> he's, he's terrified. Yeah, but he's he was smiling. so scared. It was fucking incredible. Like some really strong choices. He, there's because there's he's, a, a great line that like great acting is all about the the partner you have. Yeah. I, there's a phrase and I don't know what it is. Yeah. So I fucked it up, but. Like yeah. his performance yeah. made Nick Cage's performance right. even that much better. I'm yeah. glad that you brought that up. Because at this point in the story now, like y- you know that this Michelin chef fears Nick Cage as a revered, famous, has been, once was infamous chef. Right. And then Nick Cage tears him down as a chef and was like, you were my fucking pasta cook once and you overcooked the <laughs> pasta, so I fucking fired yeah. you. And who the fuck has my pig. Yeah. And then that chef puts it together that, oh, fuck, the truffles I have have come from someone who is now the enemy of the man I already feared. Yeah. And there's another detail in that that then really starts to reveal the theme of this movie that makes it so unbelievably lovely, where he goes, you wanted to open a pub. What happened what, to that? Why didn't you do And that? then he goes, well, this food's more popular. People really love it. And Nick, maybe you remember it better than I do, but he goes on this rant. Uh-huh. Yeah. Very, very, very small. I mean, he never says a lot. Yeah. But of... Follow- it, is, it is so what is fucking cutting. He's talking about him, give, pretty much him giving up on his dreams. Yep. And he says a line that says, every day you will wake up and there will be a little less of you. Oof. And that shit... Cut me to my core. Damn, because- Greg, you don't like being famous? What? No. <laughs> what are you well, talking it's about? essentially about like, no. don't give yourself don't to give- other people yeah. because of what you think you're supposed to right. do. Yeah. Every day you will wake up and there will be a little less of you. Because he goes, why didn't you do it? Right. Why yeah. didn't you do it? Once again, about subtext, you go, oh, this guy left it all yep. because... Right. He was, he living, was living a for life other people. He's as projected. If the most he's like, famous all of chef. This, he's like, this isn't real. This yes. place isn't real. You're not real. The, all of that shit. Real. You're not You're real. Not real. Yeah. This food isn't real. It was fucking amazing. So my other favorite scene is there, and this like really shows how much you learn everything you need to know about this character. There's a scene. It's one shot. It's a wide shot that slowly pushes in. They're only talking about bread a salted baguette they never talk about anything else she says one thing of i was going to keep the store in your name but i'm a baker and through that we know that this woman is either his dead wife's sister or or best friend we know that his wife died and that that is single-handedly what ruined him the tragedy of her death drove him out to the woods Mm -hmm. and that he gave up cooking because he felt he wasn't able to dedicate enough love to the person that mattered more to him that this fucking fake reality of cooking expensive food for these fucking rich yuppies was more important you learn all of that in a, but all they're saying uh, a, in a conversation is bread. about yes. bread. They don't say any of the things that I just said. Yeah. No. Those words are not uttered once in the movie. Yeah. And and I learn it from a baguette. Yeah. I think it's important oh, to note the, so good. <laughs> the way that you find out his wife is dead, right? Because you're like, what the fuck happened to this guy if he was such a famous chef and like all this stuff is happening? It's important to bring back our boy Amir, the truffle drug yeah. dealer. Is like I said, the the same way. He's also fi- great. Yeah, he was fantastic. The same way you're finding out a lot about Nick Cage slash Rob's life, he's also sharing stories about his life as, yeah. you know, never being able to live up to his father's expectations. His father's a truffle dealer too. It's you know he's on his own. He he's not going to go work for his dad because you know he he needs to make a name for himself. And you really get this vibe of this kid as like a follower, not trying to be a leader. Mm-hmm. And then again, he goes 
through the relationship with Nick Cage as kind of like following him around and not really leading mm. any part of the story until we figure out that Nick Cage finds out who in fact took his pig. Right. Which can we reveal? We're going to reveal it. Okay. It's Amir, his truffle hunter's dad, who is the direct competition. And the the beauty of this is that you start hearing about Amir's father very early on. Mm -hmm. He makes these little comments of like, well, my dad would never da 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 da. And you're hearing about it and you think it's just a way that they're connecting. And it turns out that the whole time this guy was the one who took Nick's pig to cut off the competition. So Nick Cage goes directly to this man's house. He makes Amir give him the address. He walks into his fucking house. They have the most intense conversation where the guy is like, I respect the shit out of you. I think you're an amazing chef, but I will fucking make your pig into bacon if you don't walk away from this. I have a business to run. My son, you know, he can't be as good as he thinks he is. He's going to die in this business, but it turns out he's just threatened by his own son. It, it, it becomes the most complex father-son healing experience. And you find out that the wife of the the truffle, Amir's mother the, Amir's mother also passed and she's alive she's no in sorry a, she's a well she's, she's in, in a coma, coma. Mm -hmm. and, and the best meal that she ever had right was, was one that Robin made Rob cage made. Yeah. and so here you go yeah oh but the, the, the context of it is that they would always fight the yes. mom and the dad would always the, yeah the mom violent and the dad would always get family. violent they yeah. would always have date nights and all of that stuff Amir's parents would always have date nights and they would always come back drunk and angry at each other and then one time one of his better memories uh growing up they came back and they were happy and they were laughing and it was because and it was because robin made them food and so now yeah. here's the point so rob is here he has this showdown yes with this big bad villain and the guy says fuck off yeah and rob comes out and he's like I got a list. And you're like, here we fucking He's go. He's going to murder We've, this man. I've been waiting this whole movie. He's Nick's been getting this shit kicked out of him. It's time for Daddy Cage yes. to fuck shit up. And what does he do? <laughs> he cooks a meal. He makes a meal. And that's what I wanted to bring up was that's how you find out that Nick Cage's wife died is because he enlists the help of Amir. He says, you need to go get these certain ingredients. And he yeah. uh, has to go to get a bottle of wine out of a, a mis <laughs> like uh, the yes. back of a mausoleum and from this woman who had been holding it for Nick Cage. And he's like, Amir's like, wait, you're holding this for who? And he's like, Nick and Lori. And he's like, who's Lori? And she, sh she takes him to Nick Cage's wife's mausoleum. Right, right, right. And you're like, Oh, that was very high at this part. So I'm glad you. Holy <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. shit! Like it's re it's revealed about his yeah. wife without even him being in the fucking scene. Yeah. yeah, and then it's never addressed again until these two villains meet. Or you want to say villains? These two big bads meet, and Nick Cage throws this insult at Amir's dad oh, and says, well, "I I will say there was one moment between him and the dad, Robin that's and what the I was dad." Where he was just like, uh, when they were like butting He's heads. like, have you always been this way? Yeah. Or was it after or she, she died? died? Yeah. And he goes, Sorry. were you? Yeah. And, and that's then all you, you were like, wait a minute. Was he fucking the wife? I went down this rabbit hole yeah. that I thought Nick Cage was fucking his wife, which is why this guy wanted to fuck him back and ruin his business. You see? Guilty babies, did you know that Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle and a wide range of recipes to suit your preferences? Okay, Green Chef is the number one, number one meal kit for eating well. Options are available whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced meal. I personally love the pork tenderloin with spicy aioli. Jared and I literally made it last night. He was like, oh my God, did you order in? And I was like, nah, baby, it is Green Chef. I got to tell you to go to greenchef.com slash guilty130 and use code guilty130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash guilty130 and use code guilty130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. So now we have this moment where we're like, here we fucking go. Yeah. Daddy Nick's going to get his revenge. No, he just cooks a meal, a beautiful meal, which is, oh my God, fucking Duck. food porn montage. Yes. Just stunning. And the guy 
takes one bite of the chicken or the duck. I think it's duck. Drinks the wine. Or it's a And bursts Cornish into hen. tears because Rob, Nick Cage remembers every meal he's ever cooked. And this is the meal that meant so much to this guy. The one and, that he shared with his wife, who is now in a coma. And, and then... Burst into tears and you feel so bad. After trying to commit suicide. Huh? After trying to commit suicide. Who? The mom. Oh, you think that's what happened? That's what Amir says. Yeah. Literally, the mom tried to unalive herself because of the marriage she was in. I believe so. I so you so. literally think this guy is like a fucking villain. Yeah. Yeah. And then he has this meal. He breaks down. You realize he's just a baby boy, soft egg inside. Yeah. But he reveals that in Kidnapping Pig... <sighs> died it's really sad i cried i cried and then you get nick giving yes. the moment give, yeah this is what gives will it, give him an oscar should, should give, give him, him the an fucking oscar, oscar. Yes. he breaks down crying and what's so beautiful about it is that it's him crying for his pig but also crying and mourning his wife in yeah. a way yes. that we haven't gotten to see the right. whole movie right and look guys i know that Andrew Garfield's all the rage right now. Yeah, oh, he's, he's so charming. Tick, tick, My name's Andrew boom. Garfield. I was so good. I sang in Tick, Tick, Boom. He was great. And I, I'm reminding everyone how much you loved me as Spider-Man, even though those movies sucked. Nick Cage doesn't need to sing. <laughs> he Fair. just needs to take fists to the fucking face. All he needs to say is, I'm looking for my pig. And guess what? Yeah. Nick Cage was also fucking Spider-Man. He, he was, was in the best Spider-Man. Huh? Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah. He, he was, was Spider Noir. noir. He's Noir oh. Spider Man. Oh, cool. Nick Cage deserves this fucking <laughs> Oscar. You know what I love this about is a this performance, part, though? This is a performance that will live in my mind yeah. for so fucking long. Yeah, I'm telling everyone to watch this movie. Oh, Tick, yeah. Tick, Boom. My name's Andrew Garfield. Oh God, I'm singing so mad. songs. Did you watch Tick, Tick, Boom? Yeah, it sucked. Oh, I really enjoyed it. Mm, I fuck it. watched it. All you my take, rent heads you out take, there. I know, everyone's so mad. 25,000. Um, you take a bad musical and adapt it and think it's going to be a good movie? Are you talking about Darren Hanson? No, now? I'm talking about Tick, Tick, okay. Boom. Who is he playing, Andrew Garfield? Uh, Jonathan Larson, who oh. wrote all of your favorite musicals. Oh, look at him. He's singing the way that the guy sang in real life. That's cool. Okay, Fuck you know you. what I love? <laughs> you know what I love about that moment where the three men Garfield. are standing in that in that office, kitchen, living room thing where it's the villain who you realize is a soft baby boy who just misses his wife and realizes that he was like such a shitty person to his wife and his kid. You have Nick Cage who realizes he never really properly mourned the death of his wife. And then you have the son who realizes he's been neglected by his father but realizes it's because he is a shitty person and never grieved his wife. Is there is over food healing. Yeah. And everyone can relate to the feeling of Food being the universal cometh together hmm. of human people. And it's done in a way that isn't about the food. Like, yes, there's a little bit of food porn. And yes, this is a movie about a chef ultimately. But it's it's done in a way that feels so believable yeah but again if you said to me this man is gonna win over his villain by cooking him a duck <laughs> it's I'd like, be like the end of ratatouille yeah, yeah it, it is, is like the end of ratatouille, ratatouille. ratatouille. it just feels oh my god it's I just, so emotional yeah you feel for all three of these men even though you kind of because, feel complex feelings about all three of them right because i mean even Again, going back to how silly all of this sounds, it doesn't matter it because it's just about mining a moment. You Oof. know, it's my it's it's creating that moment at the end. It's it's reminding people or I mean, showing people something that was off screen, which is the 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 dinner that they had mm. and how important that was to everything. Yeah. You know, if that didn't happen, then none of this would have happened. And to watch that come around at the end is just such a beautiful like that's such that's such good writing and ultimately and such simple writing. And ultimately, this movie, you expect it to be a revenge story. It's yeah. set it's, up. It's like yes. a revenge story. This is a movie about just, mourning. It yeah. breaks it's your a movie, fucking it's, heart. Yeah. It's about loss and learning to get over that loss. Yeah. yeah. And and. At the end, this is like what really fucking That's what killed me. Fucking got me. He goes, he goes, he reveals to Amir. He's like, "Hey, we're good. I don't need the pig to get truffles. Yeah. I, 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 I never the needed the, the. I never the needed trees the pig. tell you. And he says, "Well, then, what was this all about?" And, and he, he says, says, "I loved her. Loved her. That's how I feel about my animals. Oh, I 
Are you kidding me? That's so, are you going to cry? Because I'm going to cry. Are you kidding me? Can Love we, this little furry just, pig. Can we just sit with this for a moment? <laughs> I'm going to cry. I'm going to get my period in like 24 hours. I can't handle talking about a pig being slaughtered. You just... He just fucking loved her, man. He loved the thing. And but that's, wouldn't you go to the end of the earth for Bowie? I would. But also, like, he... Look, we all do this in this life, right? We're we're so work-focused. Yeah. And it's about our goals. And I'm a, I'm a chef, so I have to be a great chef. And through the subtext of this movie, I see a portrait of a man that put his career before love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he went to the woods and recommitted himself for 15 years mm-hmm. and said, love is more important. And the thing that love that he loves got taken from him. And so he did everything he could to get it back. Because he he finally realized what's fucking important in this life. And that is that is a message that cuts deep. Love and connection. It's more important than who you are and your fucking status and a mirror with your shitty Camaro and your fucking watch and your and your sunglasses. Because a mirror in the beginning of this movie, he thinks the things that he has, the status that he wants to get, that's what's gonna make him special. That's what's gonna Mm -hmm. give him value. No. Yeah. It's It's your connection. It's a connection to To you, the people around you, and the pig that you fucking love. Oh God. (laughs) That you don't fuck. No, (laughs) wait, when does he say he doesn't fucking fuck? I don't remember that. There's a lot of mirrors like, like, what is you, you fuck your pig or whatever? And then there's like a whole scene goes on and he goes, I don't fuck my pig. Yeah. It's when he's going to Hotel Portland. Yeah, oh, got yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. It made me laugh so hard. Yeah. There and this are, movie's also very funny. It's, it's just great. It's LO. It's so just absolutely absurd. I was gonna ask, like, do you guys remember a meal in your life that like <sighs> means oh, God. the most to you? Oh wow. I I you know got mine. One? Oh yeah, yeah. Go. I know without question, I know mine. I, it was eating Kobe beef. In Kobe, Japan. Oh, well, that would do We, it. like, took a train. It was myself, my mom, which was so special, my boyfriend, and Stephen Cantor <laughs> in Japan. We took an hour train to Kobe. We walked around this village. There was, like, no one there. It felt like a fucking movie set. And we, like, slid open this door, and they greeted us. And we felt like we were being these, like, loud, boisterous Americans, so our voices got really quiet. Oh, well. And we go to the back of this restaurant, and it's silent. There's probably, like, 20 to 40 people eating in this restaurant, and it is fucking silent we're like this is a little creepy it's weird we sit in the back this guy brings it out he does does the whole thing and he slices the beef and we're watching it and he serves it to us and we all are quiet and we all take a bite and all of us cried oh (laughs) all four of us burst into tears oh my god and like we're looking at each other and smiling and chewing this beef and like we it was just a culmination yeah. of the whole trip. Garrick, you want to go to Japan, dude? Yeah, yeah I, I do. do this. Let's do that. Would you just say you want to go to Japan? Yeah. Am I not invited? Well, you already, you already did, this. did this. What the fuck? I, I want to go back. You, you did you're not going to cry twice. To this twice. day, I've never had anything like that. You're going to go and be like, it was better last time. No. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm a no, secret No, like you guys should come like a different time. I don't post about it on Instagram that much, but I, I have traveled the world based on Anthony Bourdain's foods. Yeah. And... Th- that's why I think I also love this movie. If you love Chef, if you love oh my God. any of any, if Bourdain. You've, if you've ever li- or read or listened to uh, Kitchen Confidential, Confidential, you are going shit. to I was, love this movie. Like, it, that was another reason why when they said this is a chef, I was like, oh, this is, you know, he's a he's rude the board guy. Of, yeah, he's, he's like, like a, one in a million. Like yeah. you immediately know who this character guy is. Yeah. Let me tell you, this mm. movie opens up with a chapter. And when I tell you that I am a fucking <laughs> sucker such for movie a, with chapters, I'm, yeah, if, no matter what, it's you only two need chapters, three, though. Three, three, in three this. chapters. Yeah. I missed the third. I'm and sorry. I was, I'm so that's like just a cheat you code to my heart. Two chapters. I thought it was only two chapters. Only cheat saw. code to yeah. my fucking heart. And then you realize they're not chapters. It's a menu. Yeah. It's the fucking courses yeah. of the meal that he's gonna cook yeah. to change their life. So, ah! so Who wrote this? Just a brilliant fucking. Some, some Do we even know? Man. I I'm like, I'm I'm I want to go back and watch this tonight and like show everyone I love about this movie. Yeah, I'm remembering the scene when he's first driving in the car with a mirror, and it's just restrained Nick. I mean when Nick Cage is restrained he's so good and Amir has the radio on and Nick Cage just slowly goes over and turns it off Amir turns the radio on Nick slowly turns it off it's just like 
Just watching this man's face is beautiful. Oh, and there's one scene where Nick Cage steals a bike off a Porsche and then uh, there's a kid there and he goes, Gah! He growls at him. Um, That's incredible. I just keep That's writing, why Nick hasn't Cage he showered out. yet? He still hasn't showered yet. He still hasn't showered yet. And well, that, that was a negative. How often do you see characters in movies shower? Many times. All the time. Think about all the shower scenes you've ever seen. I know, time. but those are like sexy scenes. scenes. No, they're like self actualization scenes. No, I don't. He could have had a shower moment. I think. Do it's you very think rare. somehow not showering added to this character? I understand it adds to the urgency, but do you think somehow if he would have showered, you would have been like, meh? I think that the main thing is that he was just in the same clothes mm -hmm. and didn't wash the blood off of his face. He ne he was in a three star Michelin chef fucking restaurant and he did not wash the blood off his face as a chef. Come on, the disrespect. Well, I, I guess it. he was disrespectful. Whatever. He just, he just doesn't care about all of this anymore. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Good. So one. this movie was written and directed by Michael Sonorski. This is his directorial debut. This what? guy just fucking what jumped onto the scene and fucking destroyed. It, doesn't it just make you feel so inadequate? Yes. As a, as a, How as old a was human? he though? How old is he? Yeah, yeah thank uh, you. <laughs> let's find out. Because this man might have lived a life. He doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. Really? So, you know, obviously you trust our opinion. You listen to this show. You listen to all this. Uh, do you trust the opinion of a president? Perhaps. Amazing. A cool president? Biden? This, this is. Fuck you. This oh. is on Barack Obama's Barack's. 14 favorite films of the year 2021 list. Yeah. Wow. So Fucking good. I think this is on Biden's list. You think he's watching movies? I, you had said something is, about a president. Is I, that Biden, a cool president? Is does Biden his not little cool? meetings and goes to sleep. Mm. As a president fucking should, we should not be hearing about anything the president's doing. Um, so this is fun. This is the only fun fact that I really have. And yes, it is a 97% of Rotten Tomatoes. Fuck yeah. Um, so in a film Q&A, the director revealed that the pig had only three days of training uh, <laughs> due to budget constraints. They weren't able what? to, they weren't able to afford a, a trained pig because this was a really low budget movie. No yeah. way. Yeah. And so the pig that they had bit Nick Cage <gasps> multiple times. No! That breaks so much like veil for me. And that shows how good Nick is. Yeah. That he fucking sold it. Yeah. Yo, you need to watch. Okay, so he's been doing the round tables with actors because like he's yeah. trying to get the Oscar circuit uh -huh. going. And there's one, it's um Okay, it's Nick Cage, Andrew Garfield, and then he's talking to Jonathan Majors. And they're talking about this horse in a movie that, that Nick filmed on. And this horse was so nasty. He was kicking him and spitting at him. And Jonathan Major like names the horse. And he's <gasps> like, yeah, that horse was so nice to me. <laughs> and Nick is like, this horse gave me hell. <laughs> it's an incredible clip. You got to go oh find it. Maybe I'll retweet it when yeah. this comes out. Oh, it's fine. so funny. Now we got to decide. Is this movie a oh, pleasure? No, we don't have guys, to decide anything. Guys, it's a pleasure. Guys. Are you kidding? This is Are the you first time kidding? we all simultaneously agreed, like yeah. before the podcast yeah. even started. There was Easily. no question. We all agreed this was an Oscar winning. I, I fucking love stumbling into greatness. Yeah. It's so nice because I didn't hear shit about this movie. No. I remember seeing the trailer. the billboard. or the yeah. I didn't even see the trailer. Really? I remember the trailer for that other one that was really bloody starring him. Mandy. Mandy. There you go. And it was just like very... One very stylistically shot. And I think yeah. that's where he was like kind of on his rise to being like, oh, I'm an actor again. And so I saw this and I was like, oh, I, I'm, I guess this is cool, but I also just thought that it was the same thing. So I just kind of like left I it alone. I asked Maggie if she wanted to watch it. And I told her it's an action movie. <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed. Yeah. You said it was an action movie? Yeah. Did she like it? She she didn't want to watch it. Oh, uh -huh. well. And now I'm going to make her watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, it's Nick Cage and it's about a pig and it's an action movie. She's like, yeah, I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> I probably also would have been out. like, what? No. It's such a hard thing. It's a hard sell. It is. It's a but really hard we sell. Yeah. Yeah. We better have more, more, uh, more visibility for Nick Cage yeah. and the pig. Give Nick Cage the Oscar, the Oscar you cowards. Oh, oh my God. Could you imagine the career to be like, oh, I got one, or I got an Oscar early in my career and then I did a bunch of bullshit and then I got another one. And I'm back, the baby. Yeah. And guess what? I've always been this good. Yeah. yeah. Good I mean, you him. see him in adaptation, you're like, oh, this is one of the great, this, this man just acts. That's all he does. It's all he knows how to do. He's not a human being. Yeah. He's an actor. Good. Yeah. Actor. 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 He's a thespian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's Troop 651. One of a kind.
And yeah. we thank him for his service. Yeah, go God. watch this movie, guys. It's so good. It's really good. Fuck. I'm at Corn Day on all the things. I'm at Kelsey Dare on all the things. Gary Bernard on all of the things. And wow. Till next time. Devastated. Oink, oink. <laughs> <laughs>